At a somber funeral service in the heart of Maine, a dog's frantic barking shattered the solemn silence, echoing through the air with an eerie urgency. The mourners turned their attention to the commotion, their expressions a mix of confusion and concern. As the canine's agitation escalated, Major, the loyal companion, seemed possessed by some unseen force as he lunged towards the casket, his claws scratching against the polished wood in a desperate attempt to reach inside, Cassidy, struggling to contain him, felt her own confusion mirrored in the rising panic of the gathered mourners. Despite her efforts to calm him, Major's fervor only intensified, his snarls directed at the perplexed priest, Father Jonathan, Father Jonathan, usually a beacon of warmth and composure, now wore a bewildered frown as he gently laid a hand on Cassidy's arm, silently acknowledging the unsettling scene unfolding before them. Against the backdrop of scandalized whispers, he quietly suggested the Unthinkable, to open the casket and uncover the source of Major's distress. Nodding in reluctant agreement, Cassidy braced herself for the revelation, her heart heavy with uncertainty. With trembling hands, the pallbearers carefully lifted the lid, revealing not her grandmother's peaceful form, but instead a perplexing sight that defied all logic. Inside the casket lay a meticulously arranged collection of weathered seashells, arranged in a cryptic pattern upon the satin lining, beneath them. Nestled amidst the shells, was a faded photograph, its subjects unfamiliar yet hauntingly reminiscent of her grandmother's features. As Cassidy picked up the photograph, a surge of disquiet washed over her, the image sparking distant memories that refused to coalesce into clarity. Father Jonathan's hushed words hung in the air, casting a pall of unease over the gathered mourners, something was undeniably amiss. In that moment, amidst the shell fragments and faded memories, Cassidy's grief was Eclipsed by a sense of profound bewilderment, each detail of the unsettling tableau seemed to taunt her, offering no solace, only unanswered questions that echoed in the cavernous void left by her grandmother's absence. Cassidy's fingers trembled as she held the photograph, her gaze locked onto the haunting image before her. The woman depicted seemed to peer back at her with an intensity that sent a shiver down Cassidy's spine. The resemblance to her grandmother was uncanny, from the shape of the eyes to the curve of the smile, this couldn't be mere chance, it had to mean something more profound. In a flurry of fragmented memories, Cassidy recalled snippets of conversations she'd overheard in her childhood, whispers of a long-lost sister, swallowed by the unforgiving sea, in a fishing community such as theirs, such tragedies were not uncommon, yet the weight of the loss had always lingered like a ghost in their family's history. As Cassidy grappled with the implications, the murmurs, of the townsfolk grew louder, their hushed discussions tinged with a palpable unease, phrases like, bad blood, and, never should have come back, hung heavy in the air, casting a shadow over Cassidy's thoughts, old Mr. Bennett, his weathered face etched with stern resolve, approached her with a solemn warning, his words laced with a foreboding gravity, his cautionary tone sent a chill down Cassidy's spine, igniting a flicker of fear in the depths of her soul, that night, as restlessness gnawed at. Her, Cassidy found herself drawn to her grandmother's attic, a place steeped in forgotten memories and untold secrets. With each creaking step, she felt the weight of history pressing down upon her, urging her to uncover the truth that lay hidden in the shadows for what felt like an eternity. Cassidy scoured the dimly lit space, her heart pounding with a mixture of trepidation and determination. Yet, despite her efforts, she unearthed nothing of significance until a sliver of moonlight illuminated a loose floorboard at the edge of the room. Driven by an irresistible curiosity, Cassidy knelt beside the floorboard, her fingers trembling as she pried it open. In the darkness below, a worn metal box lay nestled amidst the dust and cobwebs, as if waiting patiently to reveal its secrets to the one who dared to seek them. Inside the worn metal box lay a brittle newspaper clipping, its yellowed pages crackling beneath Cassidy's trembling hands. As she unfolded the paper, a headline screamed of a tragic drowning, recounting the tale of a woman, just a few years older than Cassidy's grandmother, lost to the merciless depths of the sea decades before Cassidy's birth, but it was the chilling detail that sent shivers down Cassidy's spine, the body was never recovered, beneath the newspaper clipping lay a weathered map, its faded lines and markings hinting at secrets long buried beneath the sands of time, with a sense of trepidation mingled with determination, Cassidy knew that. If she sought answers, this map would be her guide. The following morning, armed with the tattered map and accompanied by Major, Cassidy set out on a journey that would lead her to the heart of a mystery that had haunted her family for generations. Yet, even as she ventured into the unknown, 
Major's usual ease on their walk seemed replaced by a palpable tension, as if he sensed the weight of the secrets they were about to uncover, following the trail laid out before her by her grandmothers. Cryptic markings, Cassidy found herself led away from the familiar paths of the town and onto a winding coastal trail rarely traversed by the townsfolk, guided by the map's directions. She eventually arrived at a hidden cove, nestled amid towering cliffs and shielded from prying eyes. As the salty tang of the sea grew stronger with each step, Cassidy approached a weather-beaten shack standing defiantly against the relentless onslaught of the elements, moss clung to its worn wooden facade, and the windows seemed to stare out at the ocean like hollow eyes, summoning her courage. Cassidy knocked on the door, and it creaked open to reveal a scene frozen in time. Faded nautical charts adorned the walls, their markings mirroring those on Cassidy's map. A simple yellow dress hung on a peg by the door, its fabric worn thin with age, the same dress worn by the woman in the photograph. A chill swept through Cassidy as she surveyed the room, a sense of unease creeping over her like a shadow. And then, from the depths of the gloom, a figure emerged, a woman whose features bore the unmistakable marks of time, yet whose eyes burned with a startling clarity. I'm Beatrice, I knew you'd come, the woman rasped, her voice barely more than a whisper, yet filled with a quiet certainty that sent a shiver down Cassidy's spine. In that moment, as the weight of generations of secrets hung heavy in the air, Cassidy knew that she had finally come face to face with the truth she had been seeking. All along, Cassidy's mind spun with a whirlwind of thoughts, attempting to piece together the fragments of the puzzle that had eluded her for so long, the newspaper clippings, the inexplicable emptiness of the coffin, the photograph nestled among the seashells, it all began to form a tapestry of revelations, each thread woven with whispers and rumors that had swirled around her grandmother like a fog, how, it was the only question Cassidy could muster, her voice tinged with a mix of disbelief. And urgency, it's a long story, Beatrice replied, her voice trembling with the weight of decades-old regrets, with a gesture towards a worn armchair, she beckoned Cassidy closer, inviting her to share in the secrets that had been buried beneath layers of silence for far too long, when sunlight filtered through the dusty windows, casting long shadows across the floor, Cassidy felt a sense of clarity begin to dawn within her, the weather charts, the meticulously arranged seashells, they suddenly seemed less like relics of the past and more like pieces of a puzzle waiting to be solved. With Major's comforting presence by her side, Cassidy listened intently as Beatrice embarked on her tale, recounting a story of deception and desperation, of a fake death and a desperate bid for freedom from the suffocating grip of the town's suspicions. As Beatrice spoke of a pact of silence sworn with her younger sister, a pact that Cassidy's grandmother had honored until her final breath, Cassidy sensed a different kind of truth beginning to emerge, something deeper than mere words could convey. There was a connection, Beatrice hinted, one that transcended simple biology, a bond with the sea itself. As the sun dipped towards the horizon, casting the ocean in hues of molten gold, Cassidy found herself standing on the precipice of revelation. Decades of secrets lay open between her and Beatrice, their shared history unfolding like the unfurling of sails caught in a favorable wind. The photograph, the seashells, were they acts of love or defiance? Cassidy couldn't say for certain. But as she looked into Beatrice's haunted eyes, so reminiscent of her grandmother's, the question of how seemed to fade into insignificance compared to the burning curiosity of what comes next. Beatrice revealed to Cassidy a truth that had long been whispered but never fully acknowledged. She was different from the other townsfolk, her veins coursing with the same salt water that lapped at the shores of their home. Yet, instead of embracing her gifts as blessings, the townsfolk twisted them into curses, fueling rumors of witchcraft and dark forces at play. With each word, Beatrice's voice faltered, weighed down by the weight of years of fear and suspicion that had shadowed her every step. Yet, in Cassidy's eyes, there was no judgment, only understanding and a shared determination to unearth the truth buried beneath layers of deceit and misunderstanding. Beatrice's voice trembled with emotion as she recounted the tragic events that had unfolded, the weight of guilt and sorrow evident. In every word she spoke, a young fisherman's life was lost in a boating accident. She began, her voice choked with tears, and in the aftermath, everything turned vicious. They blamed me, she confessed, her eyes glistening with unshed tears even as they waited in vain for the young man's body to wash ashore. The townsfolk pointed accusing fingers at Beatrice, labeling her as the perpetrator of dark deeds and sinister magic. I couldn't bear it, Beatrice admitted, her voice breaking with emotion. I 
couldn't let your grandmother suffer for my sake, and so, in a desperate bid to escape the suffocating scorn and to spare her sister from the shadow of suspicion, Beatrice made a fateful decision, she would fake her own drowning, vanishing from the town's gaze in a bid for freedom, but the guilt of leaving her beloved sister behind, to shoulder the burden alone, had weighed heavily on Beatrice through the long years of isolation. As Beatrice's story unfolded, Cassidy felt a flicker of steel in her gaze, a determination that cut through the lingering sympathy Cassidy held for her plight, that's when he started. Beatrice spat out the name with venom, her eyes flashing with righteous anger, Bennett. The revelation of Bennett's involvement sent shockwaves through Cassidy, shattering the illusion of respectability that had cloaked the town's supposed guardian. His whispers of curses and dark magic had masked a far more earthly greed, a desire to seize control of the land her family had. Protected for generations, Bennett's manipulation of the townsfolk, his insidious lies, had played them like puppets on a string, all in service of his own selfish agenda, and at the heart of it all lay the coastal land, a prime piece of real estate ripe for development. A wave of anger surged through Cassidy, fueled by the realization that generations of her family had been tainted by Bennett's lies. The townsfolk, though not inherently cruel, had been swayed by fear and deception, their trust, exploited for Bennett's gain. While the truth unfolded before her, Cassidy vowed to reclaim what was rightfully hers, to expose Bennett's deceit and to restore honor to her family's name. For in that moment of reckoning, Cassidy understood that the true villain had been hiding in plain sight all along, wearing the mask of respectability while his hands dripped with the blood of innocence. Cassidy's heart ached with the weight of injustice as she contemplated the years her grandmother had spent. Under the cloud of suspicion, all due to one man's insatiable greed, yet, despite the darkness that loomed over their family, a glimmer of hope remained within Cassidy, the hope that truth could prevail, that justice could be served. But Beatrice's words cast a shadow of doubt over Cassidy's optimism, it's too late, Beatrice insisted, her voice heavy with resignation, nobody will listen, too much time has passed, and too many lies have taken root, still, Cassidy couldn't shake the feeling that. They owed it to her grandmother's memory to try, what about her body, Cassidy pressed, her voice tinged with determination, I did it, Beatrice declared defiantly, I wanted to say goodbye, I guess she's still in the cool room, resting forever, Cassidy's curiosity peaked, how did you do it, she asked, her gaze fixed on Beatrice, I still have a few friends, Beatrice replied cryptically, her chin lifted in defiance, but I'll never tell who they are, back in town, an uneasy tension rippled through the Streets as news of the empty coffin spread like wildfire, Cassidy saw the judgment in everyone's eyes, the unspoken question of what darkness her family was hiding, Father Jonathan's presence brought a glimmer of hope, as he listened to Beatrice's story, his eyes sparked with righteous anger, though he offered no empty promises, his determination was palpable, word reached Mr. Bennett swiftly and his reaction confirmed Cassidy's suspicions, his fear betrayed him, confirming Cassidy's resolve to uncover the truth, their confrontation drew a crowd, and long-forgotten incidents were brought to light, seeds of doubt planted by Father Jonathan began to blossom, and the tide of public opinion began to turn, the funeral was rescheduled, and this time, the coffin held no seashells or photographs, instead, it held the body of a woman who had borne the burden of secrets for far too long, when Cassidy lowered the seashells into a small hole near the cliff's edge, she felt the weight of unanswered, questions tug at her soul, was it all lies and greed, or was there some kernel of truth to the whispers? In that moment, Cassidy found a newfound acceptance within herself, her family's legacy would forever be entwined with the extraordinary, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity, as she smoothed the sand. Cassidy realized that perhaps their connection to the sea was not a curse to be dispelled, but a peculiar kind of blessing, something wild and untamed like the vast ocean itself, and with that realization, Cassidy found peace in the knowledge that their story was far from over, after watching this story, what do you think of, then there's an another story about dog, let's expect what will happen, at the tender age of just one, Colin's world was forever altered by a devastating accident that left him paralyzed, his mother, Caroline, who had cherished every moment with her adorable and healthy baby boy, found herself plunged into despair when, she witnessed the aftermath, Colin had been the epitome of joy in their little world, his laughter echoing through their home like sweet music, yet, in a heartbreaking turn of events, their bliss was shattered one fateful morning, Caroline, consumed with the daily tasks of motherhood, had momentarily stepped away to tend to the kitchen, 
leaving Colin to play in the safety of the sitting room under her watchful gaze. However, in the blink of an eye, tragedy struck as Caroline briefly stepped outside to dispose of the trash. She never could have anticipated the horror awaiting her return. A gasp escaped her lips as she re-entered the room to find Colin sprawled on the floor, his innocent exploration having led him to climb one of the high couches, only to tumble to the ground with a sickening thud, her heart pounding in her chest, Caroline rushed to Colin's side, her hands trembling as she cradled him close, murmuring words of comfort and apology, yet, despite her best efforts, his cries persisted, each wail a piercing reminder of the agony he must be enduring as a mother's. Intuition began to stir within her, Caroline couldn't shake the feeling that something was gravely amiss, desperate to soothe her son's pain, she administered pain-relieving medication, her hands moving with urgency and love, yet, to her dismay, Colin's cries showed no signs of abating, his distress a haunting echo in the air, in that moment, a chilling realization washed over Caroline like a wave crashing against the shore, something was terribly wrong, despite her initial attempts to dismiss. Her fears as mere anxieties, the truth could no longer be ignored, the fall had wrought a devastation far beyond what she had dared to imagine, forever altering the course of their lives. Upon closer examination, Caroline's heart sank even further as she observed something alarming, Colin's left arm and leg lay still, unresponsive to his attempts to move or reach out to her, even the simplest tasks, like drinking water, proved to be a struggle as his mouth refused to open properly, panic tightened its grip on Caroline as the gravity of the situation became apparent, tears threatened to overwhelm her, but Caroline knew she couldn't afford to succumb to despair, with a determination born of maternal love, she suppressed her fear and sprang into action, cradling her precious son in her arms, she dashed out of their home and raced to the hospital, her mind a whirlwind of worry and uncertainty, in the sterile confines of the hospital room, a doctor carefully examined Colin, his expression grave as he conducted his assessment, with each passing minute, Caroline's anxiety intensified, her heart heavy with dread, when the diagnosis was finally revealed, it was a harsh blow to Caroline's hopes and dreams for her son's future, the fall had caused severe damage, crushing some of the nerves in Colin's body against his vertebrae, leaving him paralyzed on his left side, the weight of this devastating news pressed down on Caroline like a suffocating weight, tears welling in her, eyes as she struggled to come to terms with the harsh reality before her, but even in the midst of her despair, Caroline found strength she never knew she possessed, with unwavering resolve, she vowed to be a pillar of support for her son, refusing to let despair consume her, though Colin remained blissfully unaware of the gravity of his condition, Caroline's heart ached at the thought of the challenges he would face, yet, with a determination as unyielding as steel, Caroline embraced her new role as a resilient mother, ready to face whatever trials lay ahead, the journey toward recovery would be long and arduous, marked by countless therapy sessions, medical consultations, and emotional upheaval, but with love as their guiding light, Caroline remained confident that together, they could weather any storm, despite Caroline's unwavering commitment to her son's recovery, the relentless cycle of therapy sessions and doctor visits seemed to yield little progress, each appointment brought, with it a glimmer of hope quickly extinguished by the harsh reality of Colin's condition, the weight of helplessness pressed down on Caroline's shoulders like a burden too heavy to bear, grief-stricken, Caroline longed for the days when Colin's laughter filled their home, his boundless energy a testament to the joy of motherhood, she missed the simple moments of play and exploration, when Colin would eagerly dash up to her, his eyes shining with excitement as he shared his latest discoveries. Now, the prospect of Colin ever walking again seemed like a distant dream, lost in the shadows of uncertainty, haunted by guilt and self-blame, Caroline couldn't shake the feeling that she should have been there to prevent the accident, the burden of responsibility weighed heavily on her conscience, a constant reminder of her perceived failure to protect her son from harm amidst her despair. A glimmer of hope emerged in the form of Esther, a compassionate colleague who sensed Caroline's anguish and reached out with unwavering support, as Caroline poured out her heart, Esther listened with empathy, offering a lifeline in the midst of her storm, drawing from her own experiences as an animal lover, Esther proposed a solution that sparked a flicker of optimism in Caroline's heart, an emotional support pet for Colin, specifically recommending a Labrador, Esther emphasized the profound impact that such a companion could have on Colin's well-being, though hesitant at first, Caroline couldn't 
Ignore the potential benefits that Esther outlined. With each word, a sense of determination began to take root within her, fueled by the unwavering love she held for her son. As she weighed the risks against the potential rewards, Caroline resolved to do whatever it took to help Colin find joy and companionship in the midst of his challenges. Caroline's decision to explore alternative avenues for Colin's well-being stemmed from her realization that traditional treatments and therapies hadn't yielded the desired results. Fueled by her unwavering determination to leave no stone unturned, she embarked on a journey to find a furry companion who could bring a ray of hope into Colin's life. With little prior experience in handling dogs, Caroline dedicated the night to thorough research, immersing herself in the intricacies of dog care. From understanding their dietary needs to learning about their behavior, she sought to equip herself with the knowledge necessary to provide the best possible care for her future furry friend. As she delved into heartwarming stories from fellow dog owners, her apprehension gradually transformed into optimism, fueled by the inspiring testimonials of love and companionship. The following morning marked a decisive step in Caroline's quest for an emotional support companion for Colin, with determination coursing through her veins. She reached out to the nearest animal shelter, articulating her heartfelt desire to adopt a dog who could offer the emotional support her son so desperately needed. Encouraged by the positive response from the staff at the Animal Care Center, Caroline eagerly delved into the process of finding the perfect match for Colin. Upon reviewing pictures and videos of the available dogs, Caroline's heart was drawn to Max, a confident and gentle Labrador. Convinced by the staff's assurance that Max would be an ideal companion for Colin, she swiftly completed the adoption process, her anticipation mounting with each passing moment when Max, the Labrador, was finally delivered to her doorstep. Caroline was overcome with a flood of emotions she never expected, as she gazed into his soulful eyes for the first time. A profound sense of connection washed over her, reaffirming her belief in the transformative power of love and companionship. The immediate bond that blossomed between Max and Colin took Caroline by surprise, leaving her in awe of the profound connection that seemed to transcend words. From the moment Max entered their home, it was as if he instinctively understood the needs of the young boy, his unwavering gaze a testament to the unspoken bond that had formed between them as Caroline watched in wonder, her heart swelled with emotion at the sight of Max's devoted attention toward her son, it was clear that Max had seamlessly integrated himself into their family, his presence bringing a newfound sense of hope and gratitude into their lives, the bond between Max and Colin held the promise of a brighter future, offering an emotional support that transcended the limitations of language. With each passing day, Max's presence became a constant source of comfort and companionship for Colin, his gentle demeanor and intuitive understanding of the boy's needs fostering an environment of positivity and support. Caroline couldn't help but marvel at the profound impact Max had on her son, whether it was by staying faithfully by Colin's side or showering him with affectionate gestures. Such as gentle licks and playful antics, Max brought joy and solace to both mother and son alike, but Max's brilliance didn't stop there. With an incredible knack for sensing when Colin was in discomfort, he would bark to alert Caroline, acting as a vigilant guardian and caregiver. His playful nature infused their home with laughter and warmth, turning even the most mundane moments into cherished memories filled with joy. When Caroline reflected on their journey together, any initial hesitations she had about having a dog in the house melted away, replaced by an overwhelming sense of gratitude for the immeasurable joy and comfort that Max had brought into their lives. With his unwavering love and companionship, Max had truly become an irreplaceable member of their family, a beacon of light in their darkest moments. As time unfolded, Caroline bore witness to Colin's remarkable progress in his journey of recovery, and it became increasingly evident that Max played a pivotal role in his rehabilitation. During their playtimes, Max would gently nudge Colin, encouraging him to stand up and move about the house. Despite the physical limitations he faced, Colin's determination to interact with Max was palpable. His efforts to pet the dog and engage in play showcasing his unwavering resolve, Max's consistent encouragement served as a source of motivation for Colin, inspiring him to push beyond his perceived limits. And then, one remarkable day, amidst their playful interactions, a breakthrough occurred. With slow and deliberate movements, Colin lifted his left arm to pet his faithful canine companion. The sight filled Caroline with overwhelming joy, tears of happiness streaming down her face as she embraced her son, 
celebrating this emotional milestone together, this touching moment symbolized not just progress, but resilience, a testament to the profound love and unique bond shared between a boy and his dog. Yet, this was only the beginning of the miracles that lay ahead for this small family. In the days that followed, Caroline bore witness to something truly extraordinary. Walking into their room one day, she was astonished to see Colin leaning on Max for support as they moved around the space together. The speed of his recovery surpassed all expectations. Not only had Colin regained movement in his left hand, but he also stood partially and managed to move his left leg, a feat that seemed unimaginable just a short while ago. Emotions overwhelmed Caroline as tears of happiness flowed freely. With each passing day, Colin's progress continued at an astonishing rate. Fueled by the unbreakable bond between him and Max, together, they embarked on a journey of healing, as Colin regained his strength and mobility, transitioning from partial mobility to a complete recovery. The once desperate situation now seemed like a distant memory, replaced by the joyous sight of a boy and his faithful canine companion, playing and exploring the world together. Caroline, overjoyed and deeply moved by the immense power of the bond between human and pet, marveled at the resilience and unwavering love that had brought them through their darkest days to this moment of triumph. Despite the disappointments of failed therapy programs and medical treatments, Caroline and Colin discovered that the unbreakable connection between Colin and Max emerged as the ultimate remedy for his recovery. Determined to have her hopes confirmed, Caroline took her son to the hospital for additional tests. To everyone's amazement, the doctors confirmed that Colin was now fully recovered. No longer experiencing partial paralysis, the news rippled through the hospital, leaving medical professionals and staff astounded by the inexplicable connection between a child and his pet. The powerful bond between Max and Colin became a topic of conversation, sparking wonder and admiration among all who heard of their remarkable story. With her hopes restored and dreams for her son taking a positive turn, Caroline found joy in watching Max and Colin play throughout the house, a scene that seemed unimaginable just weeks ago. The bond between them strengthened with each passing day, creating an environment of happiness and healing within their home. Driven by curiosity about Max's background, Caroline embarked on a journey to delve deeper into his history. She was intrigued by his well-trained demeanor and unique abilities to sense distress and form bonds easily. Little did she know that her quest for information would uncover a surprising and extraordinary truth about the Labrador. As Caroline unearthed Max's past, she discovered a remarkable history that explained his extraordinary bond with Colin. Max wasn't just an ordinary pet, he was a specially trained therapy dog with a background of assisting children with physical disabilities. His unique set of skills, honed through professional training, illuminated the source of his remarkable ability to sense Colin's distress and provide the support needed for his recovery. Caroline, astonished by this revelation, realized that Max's training as a therapy dog was the missing piece of the puzzle. His intuitive understanding of Colin's needs, combined with his training, played a pivotal role in the miraculous recovery that had unfolded before their eyes. The bond shared between them transcended the ordinary. It stood as a testament to the profound impact a well-trained therapy dog could have on the life of a child grappling with physical challenges. Max's journey began when he became available for adoption after tragically losing his previous owner in a motor accident, deeply connected to his late owner and her child. Max mourned their loss openly, unable to contain his emotions even at their funeral. The staff at the animal shelter noticed Max's persistent sadness and lack of his usual jovial demeanor, making it challenging to find him a new home. When Caroline contacted the shelter seeking a companion for her sick son, they immediately saw Max as the perfect match, having lost his previous owner, who was around the same age as Caroline's son, they believed introducing them would bring joy to both Max and the boy in need of his companionship. Learning about Max's challenging past brought Caroline to tears, realizing the resilience and love he carried within him. Their bond deepened as Caroline reflected on how close she came to giving up hope. The connection formed between them, she realized, was truly priceless and powerful. As days passed, Colin thrived with Max by his side, growing into a healthy and happy child, Max became a cherished member of their family, and his heartwarming stories spread throughout the city, challenging misconceptions about pet dogs and highlighting their role as loyal companions. Max and Colin's story became a testament to the transformative power of love and companionship, inspiring others to appreciate the special connections that can develop between humans and their pets. Have you ever experienced such a deep bond with your pet? Do you know others? 
profoundly impacted by adopting an emotional support animal? Share your experiences in the comments below. Thank you.